mining impacts their water, mining impacts their air quality, mining impacts their, they, it destroys their land and they don't have any place to plow and grow food themselves. Um, women now they are facing with the external duties um, to go walk for long distances, look for water. Women are also working long distances, pushing heavy wheelbarrows, you know, looking for source of energy um, in the abandoned mines that we have here in, in Bumalanga. For, for access for water, they wait for two to three weeks to wait for the for water tank to come and give them water. And while they're waiting for the water tank, they have to go over the, 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 the rail wall to get water. It's not safe. The, the, the living condition is not safe because sometimes we find that the mine, they blast and then there's air pollution. And sometimes we get people coming from coming in their houses for to steal, to rape them and to steal everything here in, the, in, in their houses. Okay, she says before the mines take over here, yeah? She used to work in the farm, there were farms around this area. So they had a lot of food, a lot of food supplies, basically. So it was better from Emelo. But until the mines take over, they had nothing left. We said no to mining because people are dying, because we are experiencing sinkholes. Our children, when they are playing, they ended up like being burned. On the side of community, we've been trying to raise awareness um, and that is why now we have what we call Women Affected by Mining United in Action. We're thinking that you know, empowering women, enhancing their capacity to participate in decision-making processes, will increasing their knowledge on the impact of mining in their lives, um, and also helping them to document the cases and we publicize them in ActionAid. We have YouTube that videos that um, we've been, you know, taking the voices of the women and then we end up at the end of the day we send that to government um, departments who are responsible. South African law contains some of the most advanced standards on environmental rights in the African continent. And often we see that there is a distance between what is written on the books and implementation on the ground. In order to deal with these gaps, international law provides a system for accountability so that people will not be left uh, out cold and denied their rights, but they will have an opportunity to hold the state accountable if the state fails to protect their fundamental rights. These special rapporteurs can hear cases, investigate and present them to the government so that the government takes action. If you are unemployed, it's going to be difficult for you to get food. So that's why we started initiatives like this garden, so that we can be able to feed ourselves, but also to sell the food, so that we can be able to generate income for ourselves. We know the laws after we've joined the movement. In other words, we were blank. So now, as we've joined, we've started to know many things that, oh. So we know that there are laws when the mine is coming, there's this law that they have to follow. If they don't follow that law, it's whereby we take them to the human rights lawyers. From the human rights lawyers, they are the ones who are going to deal with that thing. Women are able to think for themselves, uh, come up with strategic actions. There's a unity now amongst the women. They are even now eager to know more um, and do more in, in their own communities.